kind of like drinking a hazelnut latte next to a cow shed. Because who hasn't done that? Welcome back, whiskey fans. It's time for another new whiskey. This one that we've got today is Wolfburn Northland. So this is one that I've been quite excited about. This is one of the ones that I was really looking forward to trying. And sadly, when I've been thinking about it, I've been wondering why that is. And it's partly because of word of mouth. A lot of other people have tried Wolfburn and I've heard really good things about it. But I think it's also down a little bit to the packaging. I think that this style of packaging and presentation and branding works really well for me. It appeals to me. It's traditional. It's a little bit fun. Me personally, I love the box on this one. I love the bottle. I love that it's got that little bit of a traditional edge and it's a little bit old fashioned. I love the little wolf cartoon that they've got on the box and the bottle. I love that this one is 46%. I love that it's natural color and non-chill filtered. But just skipping ahead to the presentation on this one. One thing that I hate, what he, is that about? What's this for? <laughs> now, before you all flood the comments section telling me that it's to hold the bottle in place in shipping, yeah, I know that, but I find those really annoying. I think the box is a little bit odd on this one anyway, because what I would regard as the front of this box is this side, not that side. I think that's the front. I think you'd probably agree. And contrary to, I think, all of these other whiskies that I've got here at the moment, the flap opens to the back rather than to the front, which I find odd but kind of irrelevant. But these little flaps that kind of grab the neck of the bottle so that when you open it, you can see the top of the bottle, you pull it out, but then you kind of have to drop it down and move that. It's just a little personal gripe, but these annoy me. And I always fold those away so that they're kind of out of the picture. But I do really like the presentation on this stuff. It's a very minor complaint. And if we're honest, you can fold it out the way as I've done or rip it off. It doesn't really matter. And all in all, when we're looking at the important stuff, there's a lot to like about this stuff. So Wolfburn Distillery was founded in 2012. They could, in theory, be producing or selling 10-year-old whiskey, but I've read that this stuff, and this is just hearsay, they don't put an age statement on this, I've heard that this is about four years old. So Wolfburn is a North Highland distillery, and it's actually based in Thurso Caithness, which actually makes it the current most northern distillery on the Scottish or British mainland, which a lot of you will know that is a title that used to belong to Pulteney. And Wolfburn is another distillery that's got lots of history, and it's kind of founded very close to the ruins of a previous distillery that is operational in the early 19th century. And the, the previous distillery actually had the same name. They've taken the Wolfburn name from that previous distillery, which was operational for about 40 years in the early 19th century. Now, Wolfburn, to their credit, they've not gone down the road that a lot of other of these new distilleries have and putting the founding year of that previous distillery on their branding, which I really like. That does annoy me a little bit that some of those other distilleries are doing that and possibly misleading people into thinking that these distilleries have been around for a lot longer than they have. Wolfburn haven't done that, which I really like. I appreciate that honesty. Because me personally, and I think I speak for a lot of us, I think us whiskey geeks, we are okay generally with a distillery being new. We're okay with a whiskey being young, providing it's good. So the actual name Wolfburn comes from the Wolfburn, with the word burn being Scots Gaelic. It's a word that means river. So Wolfburn, both this distillery and the original Wolfburn distillery, they are one of several distilleries, because there's quite a few of them, that are actually named after a water source. Other details that we've got on this whiskey, as I've said, it's 46% ABV, it's natural colour and it's non-chill filtered, so ticks all the boxes there. 
and we know that this whiskey in particular is matured in American oak ex bourbon casks and ex isla quarter casks. Now, I think this is partly down to the branding, the black, and the wolf, and it's all very, very robust and it's quite a ballsy, hearty presentation. And I think that's kind of the reason why, when I was looking at Wolf Burn before I tried it, I kind of assumed that all of their whiskey was going to be peated. And surprisingly to me, that's not actually the case. Wolfburn Distillery spend 10 months of the year producing an unpeated spirit, and they spend the other two months of the year producing a spirit which is peated to 10 ppm. So basically Wolfburn, apart from this one which is matured in Exila peated quarter casks, their whiskey is going to be either unpeated or lightly peated. So let's get some in the glass and see what they've done up there at the very northern edge of Great Britain. I don't know if I showed you the label, I'll just give you a quick close up. I do really like that wolf. I don't know if there's a story behind that or if there is a wolf from legend in the area, if there's some sort of local myth or legend behind that, but I like it. Very traditional label, two part black, cream, and gold. A little hand drawn cask there, product of Scotland. Double distilled in small stills for a fuller flavour. So, Wolfburn Northland. It does seem to me like, with a lot of these new distilleries, as I've said before, a lot of them are using red wine casks or virgin oak or STR casks as an effort to try and cover up some of the youth in the whiskey. At least that's my opinion of why they're doing it. I think that with this release from Wolfburn, the Northland, because it is a release that's been around for quite a long time and it's perhaps kind of in a way one of their standard core releases it's like the normal one and i do wonder if they've used those peated isla quarter casks as their attempt at covering up a bit of the youth on their standard expression but anyway wolfburn northland on the nose so quite unexpected for me at least based on what i kind of assumed from the branding of this one the first thing that i get on the nose of this is some quite bright and fresh fruity notes so lots of apple and pear. Very sharp and clean spiritiness. With just a growing hint of light, but very farmy peat and a salty oakiness edging in occasionally. Definitely a farmy peat though. And it's always tempting to take a guess at where those peated quarter casks have come from on Isla. The obvious guess is probably Lefroy, because Lefroy are making their Lefroy quarter cask in what we assume is high volume, so there's probably a lot of those quarter casks available from Lefroy. But yeah, definitely a farmy peat. Getting strong notes of cow sheds. Also getting some really nice toasted grains, muesli, peaty malted barley. Also getting quite a nuttiness, quite a, a strong hint of something like a nutty coffee, like a hazelnut latte. It's kind of like drinking a hazelnut latte next to a cow shed, because who hasn't done that? Very pale whiskey. You'll probably notice a running theme that the whiskies that are confirmed to be natural colour, they do tend to be very pale. And I'd say that the, the fact that this is one of the paler of these new releases is probably evidence that the, the choice of flavour cask that they've chosen at Wolfburn is peat rather than red wine or STR or virgin oak or whatever. And obviously peat is not going to add a lot of colour to the whiskey, whereas those other cask types will. And me personally, obviously the, the whiskey industry tells us that colour is added because it's what the consumer assumes a whiskey should like it's what they expect and they say that if the consumer sees a pale or an inconsistently colored whiskey they'll assume that that's a sign of low quality me personally when i see that i think that's whiskey from a distillery that knows what they're doing they know what they're doing and they care about quality because they've not polluted it with anything artificial or underhanded so anyone in the whiskey industry that says that colouring is necessary because it's expected by the consumer, I'd raise you the absolute opposite. 
that when I see a whiskey which is dark brown or orange, it makes me very, very wary. It makes me not want to buy it. When I see something like this, that's what I want to buy. Anyway, Wolfburn Northland, getting back to the point, what does it taste like? I'd say that this whiskey is surprisingly mature already. I'd say that it's one of the more mature whiskies out of all of these new distillery releases that I've tried. It's only got the occasional fleeting note of youth that reminds you that this is a, a release from a new distillery. But countering that, I'd also say that it's a little bit light, perhaps a little bit too refined. But that's not to say that a light and delicate whiskey can't be enjoyable. I'd say that the, the light, slightly light, refined character of this whiskey, it actually reminds me a little bit of like a triple distilled peated Ben Romick. Because there's some notes in there, some sharp fruity notes, like a little bit like a peated smoked grapefruit and lime note. And although it is light and refined, that's a character of whiskey that I really enjoy. Let's just have another sip. Also getting some strong notes on the palate of apple peel. And a wonderful mature maltiness coming through on the palate. There are also some more smoky sort of burnt notes coming through on the palate, especially from, you would assume, from those Isla quarter casks. So I'm getting some nice toasted oak notes and also a lovely burnt peat towards the late palate. Although, must be said that this is not a peat bomb. As for the finish, I'm going to say long for the finish, long and malty with a touch of peaty sweetened grapefruit. So this is a style of whiskey that I really, really enjoy. I like that it's light and fruity and refined, but I like that it balances that with some nice smoky PT notes. I think that this whiskey is kind of a cross between the power that you get on the Isle of Rasse, but kind of with the maturity that you get on the Ardner Merkin. But I think that the thing that makes this one stand out above both of those is that really nice, beautifully sweet and intense fruitiness. As for a grade, I'm actually going to give this one a B-, so I think that's the highest grade that I've given to any of these so far. And a B- minus from me is the bottom end of what I would call very good. So that's the new front runner so far. As for the peat on this one, which I assume is coming through the majority from the peat in those Exiler peated quarter casks. I think you can tell that the peat is from that cask from a different distillery rather than the peated malt because I do think that the peat in a way kind of sits on top of this whiskey. It's not fully integrated. A little bit like an imposter wearing someone else's clothes. But I think the clothes do fit and it suits the base style of the whiskey well. I think that's an excellent example of a cask treatment applied to a whiskey done in a very clever way. Also worth noting that from my research, I've read that Wolfburn say that they use a long fermentation time. They actually ferment in the washbacks for up to four days. And I think that that long fermentation time certainly shows with this whiskey, with its light and fruity character. Because what you have to remember is when you are fermenting your wort into wash in order to run it through the stills and make whiskey, you can get a reasonable quantity of alcohol in a couple of days. You don't need to wait that long for the washbacks to do their work. If all you're interested in is making money and getting ABV in the bottle so you can sell it, you really don't need to wait that long in the washbacks. So the fact that Wolfburn have spent twice as long as they need to probably in the washbacks for this one shows that they're really interested in quality and doing things properly. One final warning that I will give you on this Wolfburn Northland, at least in my experience, this whiskey benefited a hell of a lot from airing. I personally like this whiskey a lot, lot more now than when I first opened the bottle. And I don't know if the reason for that is bottle shock or maybe just that the, the age of this whiskey is young. But definitely leaving the cork out and letting some air get in there, letting it air out and oxidise, I think that really improves this whiskey quite a lot. But whatever the reason for that, my closing comment on this one is going to be that I think that it's really inspiring and really impressive that a whiskey at such a young age from Wolfburn is this good, good enough to score a B- minus at such a young age. And I'm really looking forward to what they do in the future.
So thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.